Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th episode, double digits, one zero episode of the Tuesday Night Podcast. I'm your host, SBJ, and with me today, I do not have Alan and Sean, which is weird because it's called the Tuesday Night Podcast, and they are not here. They uh, they are actually at uh, BGGCon. I believe it's in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. They are doing that thing. I have not heard from them. They are probably having a lot more fun. Uh, We are recording this on our typical Thursday night to get it ready for Tuesday release when you guys will be hearing it, and Alan and Sean will be back by then. So don't fret, they have not gone anywhere. But instead, I had to pull the bead team for this episode. (laughs) (laughs) So true. (laughs) Uh, So I have two uh, special guests with me today. I know them very, very well because they are almost always... Well, Will is Will is always with me. Logan sometimes makes an appearance, but uh, both these guys are on my other podcast. It's super effective, which is a Pokemon podcast. Uh, but they are here with me today because they are also huge board gamers, and I was very excited. Very, it's very exciting to have them on. I will start with uh, we have Will here. Good evening, everyone. I will do my best to not talk about Pokemon, but fo- stay focused on um, board and tabletop gaming this evening. <laughs> <laughs> awesome and, and to then maintain those super alan energy levels i think that somebody needs to try to to keep to, to, to accomplish that you will have to have alan's energy yes because i sure don't uh and then with us uh on the other side of the microphone we have logan hey hey everybody i don't have alan energy either though so. no you gotta be the sean mccoy you gotta be the serious business like i'm gonna be the wacky crazy college professor and you're gonna be the super <laughs> serious business like dude he will, uh, some kind of dry joke that goes over pretty well and it's pretty funny. Oh my God, but my pants were down. <laughs> I think we can pull this off. I think we can pull it off. I think we're already off to a great start. Uh, on a side note, I am using some new recording software, so I apologize if it sounds different or weird. Uh, if it sounds good, awesome. If it sounds terrible, my apologies. Just trying something new. Um, but let's just jump right into things. Uh, let's just jump right into table talk. Hopefully we can un- unravel Will and Logan as we go along here. <laughs> so, unravel? Uh, yeah, unravel. You'll, by the end of this by the end of this podcast, you'll know us so well that you'll know our social security numbers. That's the goal. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, a little too close to retirement age for that kind of danger. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a new listener to the Tuesday Night Podcast, this is a podcast all about board games, card games, dice games, role-playing games uh, in or around the bedroom and or on your table. We are going to start with what we've recently pl- recently been playing, and I will go first. Will, we, will should have made a, a joke about... Um... The bedroom games that you said there, if he's playing the role of Alan. Oh, um, the bedroom is no place for games. What? Wait, no. that's the Sean line. Oops. Uh, 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 Monkey Island. Uh, uh, bananas. Still bananas in the bedroom. There we go. It's, okay, it's, that's good. That's good. We're off to a great start. What? You've you've never played Go Bananas in the bedroom? No. Well, no, let I've me tell bananas. you about Go Bananas in the bedroom. That you you get a banana tree. And you wait for it to grow a banana, and then you throw the bananas, and then whoever catches the slipperiest banana, (laughs) he's the winner. (laughs) I don't don't know how to move on from that. (laughs) What have you been playing lately, Mr. SBJ? Uh, I have uh, not been playing anything. Uh, I actually... I've been setting up to play something. I'm like the, the worst host here. I'm never playing anything. (laughs) Um, <laughs> you've got this huge game room in your house you <laughs> literally have a room set aside just for games and you're never playing any that's true that's true so uh, i had an office and the office wasn't really being used a lot and the board game room wasn't really being used a lot so i decided to combine them because the board game room had a lot of empty space and i was like well i could just move the desk in there and there would still be plenty of empty space 
in the board game room because I got the table, I got the shelf of games, I got a couple. It's it's a very empty space, but it's big. It can hold like six people. We've had way more than six people in my board game room when we've done like ten player. I've been coup. in there with more than six people. Yeah, yeah. Who hasn't? Um, not me. Oh yeah, Logan, you have not. <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, Irene, my girlfriend, she wanted like a yoga, like relaxation room. So I turned the office, which is way smaller than the board game room, into like a yoga relaxation room for her. Moved my computer, my desk. Uh, into the board game room and actually all yesterday i was like cleaning and setting it up and it's almost done because i plan to have people over on saturday night to do some games i'm hopefully getting the game i want to get to the table which i think will go over really well is the grizzled which uh hmm. debuted at wait isn't that a super depressing game yeah 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 it's, it's a world war Two like depressing co-op game um, oh so i i've yet to play it i've watched like a how to play i wanted to get it at gen con it sold out um Dude, but I did, I did get it like a month ago um, from Cool Stuff Inc. So I want to get that to the table and I want to get code names to the table um, and a couple other things. So my board game related news is I've been cleaning my board game room to play this weekend. So that is <laughs> that is my goal. Um, uh, Will, have you been playing anything recently? Uh, yeah, I um, right before Halloween, I sent out a message to all of my coworkers Um inviting them to play Mysterium because I had just got it the week before Halloween and uh, got a group together of some of my coworkers and we spent an hour and a half on October 30th playing a round of Mysterium. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was easy to teach because I got some of the rules wrong, but I got it right enough that everybody still had a good time. Well, you know, that's so, what's important. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it was just, you know, I think, you know, the thing about Mysterium is especially where, you know, it's coworkers and they kind of know me, but it wasn't the people who work directly for me. So they didn't know me that well. So they were really having a hard time figuring out some <laughs> of the messages I was trying to convey. <laughs> and the best one was like, you know, because also I think one thing that's not clear about Mysterium is when you go from uh, the murderer suspects to the room to the weapon the number of clues that are on the like the suspect card or the weapon card decreases so that when you get to the weapon card you only see the weapon and there's nothing else on the card that could you could use as additional clues when passing mm -hmm. the visions over and uh one of the weapons was a barbell and I don't know if you remember from when we were at Gen Con but one of the vision cards was like a polar bear with an owl face in it reading a book Yes, so I do remember that. I had that, and I handed it over to one of my coworkers. I'm trying to get him to pick the barbell. So he's like looking at it. He's like, hmm, is this the typewriter? Because there's a book, and it probably the typewriter, unless he means it's a super jacked polar bear. And I just wanted to like yell <laughs> right at that moment. It's like, that is exactly what I mean. It's a super <laughs> muscular polar bear, so pick the freaking barbell. <laughs> uh, let's... uh. Uh, unbox that a little more. Unbox is like my word of the show, um, because mm -hmm. this past Gen Con, Will, was your, your first ever Gen Con. True. And that's where we met up. Do you... I feel like you... Um, you really stuck to, like, Mysterium. Like, I didn't see your eyes open really as wide, and you didn't, like, gravitate so quickly to... A, uh, maybe code names, but, like, Mysterium really kind of stood out to me as, like, a connection to you. Yeah, definitely. I like games with cards because, you know, deck building games are my favorite. <laughs> but the game I actually bought at Gen Con and brought home with me that I still haven't played is uh, Legacy. So Legacy Gears yeah, I, of Time. I'm the same way. I, I own, I've owned that for maybe like two years at this point. And I still haven't played it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, I, I did. But there's other stuff. that I bought. But also, you know, Gen Con was kind of an, an overwhelming experience for me. It was just hmm. very large. Um so I did, you know, every day have to take some break time away from everybody. And I'm glad I know Indianapolis well enough that I have a spot that I could go to <laughs> to get <laughs> away from the crowds. Nice. Um, so, yeah, but I mean, it was like, I think, uh, you know, the Mysterium when we played it, that was lots of fun. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy that kind of a game. Yeah. Especially because it's also cooperative and not competitive. Yes. And it, it, it sets up so well uh, because it's asymmetrical as one player is the ghost and Right. can also teach without um without being i don't know like you ever play a game with like seven wonders and somebody's like 
oh, I don't know what to really do. And the only option right. is like, well, let me look at your entire hand, which can put me at an advantage. But how else am I supposed to help you? Whereas Mysterium, the whole job of the ghost is to help and guide everyone. And then the rest of the table can help each other upon. Yeah, that I th- yeah, yeah. Like the person it's I think the de facto person who is the ghost, unless you have like a crazy hardcore play group that's going to play it a bunch of times is always going to be the person who owns the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it, so, it doesn't suffer from that quarterbacking problem of like pandemic where it's like, I can teach you pandemic and that's great because we're all working together. But r- in reality, what I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you how to do your move, which is right. Not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, I mean, it's very quickly. Like if people don't understand pandemic, it's very quickly. Like they, they feel like they're on autopilot, not making any decisions. I know what you're talking about. So I would say my two pieces of advice for anybody who hasn't played Mysterium yet, um, two things that aren't clear in the rules. Number one, the clairvoyance markers, you know, where you point, where you think that somebody is making the right guess or the wrong guess. Um, Everybody gets their used ones back after round four, because that's Hmm. not clear at all. And everybody was like kind of running out of markers. And we didn't realize that you get them back after round four. Um, Also, uh, pay extra attention to what it means for the low, middle, and high success rate at the end of the game for seeing how many cards, uh, for how many cards you get to see for the actual murderer, because mm-hmm. that was very unclear. And I would actually recommend looking up on the internet guidance on how that is determined because it's really not explained very well in the rule book at all. So my my first game that we played, it was only three people, so they didn't even have that track. It was like that part of the rule book was really confusing. And I, I was yeah. like glad we didn't have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I played with six people and it was still confusing. So oh, I mean you could you could probably easily play Mysterium without the like voting if people are wrong or right. Yeah, I mean with the three players it didn't really suffer or anything. Uh, right. We, it, it was it still felt like the same game and well I mean, not that I know because I haven't played it the other way, but it, it was very <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Uh, Logan, what have what have you been playing? You probably have a list. I think you play more I, games than Will and I combined. <laughs> well, uh, recently I've been playing a ton of Pandemic Legacy because that's been every time I get together with my group of friends. Well, and Dungeons and Dragons. Like we, we play that every Monday. <laughs> um, so I highly recommend D&D 5th Edition, but uh, also Pandemic Legacy is really fun. Uh, I had to we were just getting started when you guys talked about it on the podcast. So I sort of just like skipped past it because you said there was a little bit of, of spoiler stuff. I, and I don't think I spoiled anything. Well, you, I mean, I think you just like said the word possibly spoilers. And oh, so okay. I just went, ah, get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I, in retrospect, I don't think I spoiled anything. Um, okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I mean, cause I it's, know, I listened to a podcast that did have spoilers and you guys didn't. Oh, okay. Didn't spo- yeah. I have, I've yeah. yet to open my box. Um, going back to my conversation of my board game room not being clean at all and was the biggest <laughs> reason why I haven't gotten uh, to Pandemic Legacy. But I've yet to open my box. But are you enjoying it without... Uh, I, uh, people are probably like cringing, like hoping there are no spo- yeah, I, spoilers. I will not spoil anything because I really... I really value the experience a lot of being fresh and getting into it because that's that's the whole point of a Legacy game is to be surprised by everything that you open. Um, but I've been having a blast. Like, seriously, you... it. It's like at the end of every game, almost you're going to open up new things and find new things out. And there's going to be big plot twists, big plot twists in like the middle of the first game. So here's one thing I would say that is not a spoiler, um, but it's something we missed, which is that you open the first package during the first game when the third pandemic happens, which is or epidemic. I'm sorry, um, which I didn't. I didn't realize that like if the card just says stop, it has the stop sign. So I stopped, I stopped reading <laughs> altogether, <laughs> but you need to continue reading this, the full entirety of the stop cards because they'll tell you when to open the next stop card or to flip it over. And, um, I didn't, I didn't do that. So we had to open ours at the end of the game, which it's, uh, it feels better if you open it when it tells you to, but oh, I mean, it's not sure. like, it's not, yeah, it's not like a huge deal. If you don't, you can fix any mistake you make. But uh, it'll be narratively more awesome if you do it exactly what the card says. And that's something that our group missed. Now, did you play uh, Risk Legacy? Yeah, I loved it too. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I 
I mean, depending on how you look at it, I guess I won the first four games of Risk Legacy, and that uh, that breaks the game <laughs> <laughs> because the person who wins gets a little nuke card, and they are ridiculously powerful. Especially if you, I mean, like every time you win, you get one. So I had four of these, like, like by themselves. If you just win one game, you're at a disadvantage because you lose your star for victory. You, so the game is you have to get three stars for victory. And um, people who haven't won a game yet already have a star. They start with a star. And if you win, you get you have to tear that card up and you get a nuke instead. And a nuke changes a, a die result to a six. Um, so I had like four of those every game. And so nobody really wanted to play anymore. Um, but it was still amazing because, you know, like, I mean, and, and in retrospect, we there's a lot of things introduced. I guess I won't spoil risk legacy either, but there's, I feel like it's a better designed risk at the end of risk legacy. Um, because there's a lot of improvements to the rules by the end, but you don't get to the improvements that would have solved that problem of us having one person with these, this enormous nuclear horde until like, <laughs> way farther down the line. <laughs> right. So you're saying um, because you won four, it was broken, but if you would have kept on going, the game would have, check that balance yeah and we i mean we did we got to the we got to that check of balance but it's like everybody was sort of you know done with it because <laughs> yeah i think so i would huh i think the problem my group suffered with risk legacy is like we would get to the end of the game and we would open the package or do whatever it said and it would be like very exciting and we would be like that excitement would want us to play another game, but it's like, oh, well, we'll just come back next week and play it. And then it was like the problem of, oh, what, like what happened last game? Like, what was that new rule? <laughs> yeah, I so I would definitely recommend not opening anything until you are. And this goes for Pandemic Legacy as well. Yeah, that was going to be my question is, do you recommend Don't, that for Pandemic Legacy? No. Never end a session with opening stuff up. Begin a session with opening stuff up. Okay. Then it's more exciting, and you know exactly what you're dealing with. Because like you said, it can get you lose the new rules. But okay. yeah, we're we're on we're on May. Uh, or, no, I think I guess we're on June now, and we've lost a lot. <laughs> it's a very hard game. <laughs> How many rounds is it? Is it one year or? It's one year, and is I it guess... twice a month or is it once a month? So if you win the first game in a month, then you go straight to the next month. So technically you could have 12 games and be done. But if you do that, then wow, we, you are very good at pandemic <laughs> and you got lucky. No, wow. We <laughs> is the hand slapping game. So, <laughs> the, Oh yeah. Woo. We, <laughs> you're, you're, you are the inner Allen. Um, so you're saying in pandemic legacy, you could play 24 games. If yeah. you lost, Every game. You lost every single game. And uh, by the same token, if you lose every single game and you play 24 games, then, like, what are you doing? Are you even, <laughs> are you even playing? Because <laughs> the, uh, there's a balancing mechanism to make it harder or more difficult. So every time you win a game, you, you... So the base game of Pandemic has those special cards in the deck, you know, that mm -hmm. aren't... They're, they're not nations or anything, but they're also not epidemic cards they just give you superpowers or whatever like the helicopter yeah like the helicopter so those cards uh are called funding cards and so when you you start with four in the deck and if you win a game then the government's like oh we got that sickness problem taken care of you you get two funding next time um and by the same account that if you lose they're like oh no we got to put more money into this so they give you two more um, so you can lose two or gain two every time you win or lose. Uh, so it gets, it gets progressively harder. Like if, if you have zero cards, if you've won, if you won the first two in a row, for example, and you have zero special cards in the deck, it's very hard to win. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, so we sort of skirt that line where four, four to six is where you kind of want to be. <laughs> and that makes it sort of a winnable game. And right. also pandemic in general, just, it depends a lot on on luck because every time you draw an epidemic card if you get the bad draw something just you know has a has a uh whatever that the effect is called when it has too many what is oh called? the uh, like the overflow um, yeah it's like an outbreak or something yeah the outbreaks 
Yeah, outbreaks. So, you know, let's say you have a really early epidemic and then the bottom card is Karachi and then you shuffle the deck and then the first card is Karachi. Karachi? No, we're not talking about... <laughs> <laughs> you are, Alan. Ready to go, man. You're doing it. Um, But yeah, so you can, you can quickly have a, a fi- something like that happen and so... If you get unlucky, you just you just lose. But that's kind of a tangent. Uh, I've I've had a ton of fun playing Pandemic Legacy. I will say that it's it's a much more steady stream of opening things, whereas Risk Legacy felt like, you know, when you open one of the big packs, it was like, whoa, there's so much new stuff. Oh man! And then you're it's kind of a dry spot for a while, and and you even sort of like, I guess it's a give and take because in Risk Legacy, you could see on the packs like this is the condition for which you can open this. And so you could sort of play and cater yourself to, to opening that pack. Sure. So, so like, for example, you know, I, I won the first three games. Well, one of the packs says if somebody uses three nukes in the same attack, open this pack. And I was like, well, that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I mean, you know, there's no reason to ever do that. But I did it just so I could open that pack. And it was awesome. Hmm. Um, but you don't get that in Pandemic. It's just It's just a steady stream. So at the beginning of every month, usually... That's when you get new open. packs or, and open new stuff. Got it. Or technically the end of every month going into the next month. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, Impor- and Important like question. Said, Did you get the red uh-huh. box or the blue box? The blue box. <laughs> <laughs> I think Just like it. with Pokemon. <laughs> that shows blue version. It all comes back to Pokemon full circle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah... Um, I think that that's a that was a smart thing that they did because there's nothing different in either of those boxes, but you could um, you could theoretically have two sets. You know, like I, I've I've thought many times of having two play groups and like have a, you know buy the red version and have that for my other group of gamers who are a little like I have I basically have two sets of friends. One is a more casual group that I'm going to play casual games with, and one is a more hardcore group. So the hardcore group is who I'm playing Pandemic with right now, but I yeah, think it would be fun to play more casual We're board games, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks. I stay on track. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool, but you're really liking it. Uh, yeah, I really like it a lot, and it's uh, it's always fun to go back. Yep. Awesome. Uh, any any other games on your, on your palette? Well, I, I talked about that for so long, but I, I've also been playing uh, New York 1901. <laughs> that was that's really fun. It's like a comedy. that was a that came out at Gen Con as well, did it not? I think it came out right before Gen Con, but um, but you could definitely get it there, and they had like the creator was signing copies and stuff. But it was it was very new at the time of Gen Con, so pretty much yeah. Um, but yeah, the gameplay is a lot like if you combined Blockus and Ticket to Ride, if that makes any sense. Have you, have you guys played both of those? I have played neither of those. <laughs> I've not played Blockus. I do know. I, I am aware of the game and I've played Ticket to Ride. Um, so, what was so Blockus, Blockus, I know you're going to explain it. Uh, maybe, maybe you want to give the elevator pitch. Oh, snap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. Do you have a timer? I have, I have a timer up. I have a timer up. Oh, wow. Oh, snap. Okay. Well, then go for it. Somebody ding me. <laughs> All right, so you're a you are playing uh, this very wealthy affluent person in New York in 1901, beginning to build buildings in the city. So you're one of four colors, and you play Tetris shaped pieces uh, that you have of buildings. You go from the bronze to the silver to the golden age, and then you have mega skyscrapers like um, like Woolworth or something like that. Um, there's limited space available, so you take turns acquiring areas to build buildings and then placing the buildings on later turns. Um, so you're kind of playing to get the spaces before everybody else and then have shapes of buildings because some of the buildings are irregularly shaped or they are longer or something. So you have to, somebody can easily block you from getting a very large building by acquiring some space near you. So you have to kind of manage that all the while there are bonus points available for, uh, streets on that to build on. So if you build a building that's connected to a street, it's worth more points at the end of the game. If you can make, if you can have the most buildings on that street, and uh, similarly, you can. There's. <laughs> wow! You just described an, a more more boring version of Monopoly. 
Oh no, it's way it's way more balanced and better than Monopoly. It only takes about thirty minutes to play. So I did it. I did it injustice. Uh, what, what, what's the what's the rest of the the premise here? Uh, well, the only thing I left out was there's a bonus. There's bonus cards for various things. So you may have a bonus for irregularly shaped buildings. If you're the person with the most irregularly shaped buildings, you get X bonus. If you're the person with the most square shaped buildings, you get a bonus. If you're the person with the most buildings, you know, on X Street, then you get bonuses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I watched the like. Uh, like a let's play and like um, like a, a rules video, and I was just like, eh, I don't think this game is for me. Like, I'm sure I <laughs> would like it, but I don't think I could set it down at my play group and like have them excited about uh, building buildings in 1901. I yeah okay so I uh, and given that Will just said that my explanation was terrible, I, I'll go out on a limb and say that this is the theme is boring, <laughs> but once you get into the gameplay, it's really fun. And you sort of see like, Oh, if I build this one here right now, then that blocks SPJ from building a, this giant diagonal building that I know he's planning. So there's a, a lot of dynamic strategy and you have to, you have to wager, like, is it better for me to build something right now and get the points to get to the golden age? Or should I block somebody or should I, reserve some space in the hopes that nobody's going to block me. It, so it's it was, like power grid for buildings. I've, I've actually never played power grid. It's like a cross between monopoly and power grid. No, it's a cross between ticket to ride and block. It's that's how I started. <laughs> oh, <gee>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only thing I know about monopoly is you buy spaces and you put buildings on them. Well, the, it's not random like that. Like monopoly, you're rolling dice and then you'll land on, you know, whatever color, but it's, that's randomly determined by the dice. Whereas there's no dice in, in New York, 1901, you just say, this is the place where I want to build my building because it's on this street or it's the place that actually accommodates this three by three building or something like that. So it's nothing. There's no, there's no dice rolling or randomness right. in that act. It's more, of, actually, when I come, it's more when of like I come area visit, control. We'll like, you'll convince me. <laughs> it's more area control, like ticket to ride. You right. like it because it's like Tetris. There's zigzag pieces and there's L-shaped <laughs> there pieces are, and there's yep. square pieces. There's lots of Tetris pieces, yeah. Lots of people compare it to Tetris. But I, I guess there's not much randomness at all in it. It's mostly strategy, which I think I like a lot. That might be why I like it. Do you think it's uh, more strategic than like, Ticket to Ride? Because Ticket to Ride, you can... You can win by just being pretty lucky. Right. It's it's uh it's less it's more strategic than ticket to ride for sure because there's not like if you want to if you take your turn to put down dudes then you get exactly what you wanted. There's there's a little bit uh because you know you're still looking for colors like in ticket to ride like but but ticket to ride there's you have to have like six of the same color to do something whereas in this one if you if you get the same color like pink also there's only like four colors there's a train going by because we're talking about ticket to ride realistic ticket to ride sound effects man yes that's i called that shit i know yep called it in just just to let let you guys know but anyway there's there's um there's fewer colors and you you need less luck to get the places that you are but you do sort of have to hold out sometimes on like oh i don't have there's not a pink three out there so i need to wait until next turn uh, so there's a little bit of luck. I, f- I forgot about that part, um, but it's certainly not as much as Ticket to Ride. Um, all right, so that's my that's my explanation. <laughs> awesome. It took way longer than a minute. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't plan for our what have you been playing to take so long, but no, I think it was all good. Uh, cool. Well, we only we had two more segments for for you guys, but the last segment was was nothing too exciting. So our middle segment which we'll get to now and what we'll probably end with just so we can have as much time as possible talking about it. Um, our feature topic is what games we plan on taking to our families for the holidays. Um, I'm assuming you're both going somewhere or planning on something. Um, yep. But uh, I am going up to Minnesota uh, to see my girlfriend's family and they know me as the board game guy. Like what games is Steve bringing? <laughs> games games that have gone over really well in the past have been Bonanza and uh, Werewolf. One Night Ultimate Werewolf also went really good. 
uh, a yeah. game that didn't go over well for anyone, and I actually probably hated the hated it the most was Snake Oil. Mm-hmm. Just not a big fan of that game. But uh, since I'm already talking, uh, I plan on bringing uh, <laughs> I plan on bringing monikers. Uh, I think that can go over well, and and we we've on the show talked about monikers enough, but uh, I think <laughs> it's it's small enough and easy enough to teach that there's no point in not throwing it in my bag. The other game I really want to bring is Code Names, just because even though they're not like big board gamers and they're not like like obviously a power grid or something wouldn't work, they are very competitive. Um, <laughs> And that's probably why Bonanza goes over so well. Uh, but uh, I think code names, especially with two different teams, would go over super well. Uh, so those are the two games I have on my plate. Maybe Concept, but I'm kind of burnt out from Concept. Um, I, yeah, I feel you there. <laughs> I've been playing it a lot. <laughs> no, I mean, I've played it since Gen Con. So every time I break it out, everybody wants to play it like six times in a row. And so I've played it a lot. Because <laughs> yeah. I. I was initially super excited, so I brought it everywhere, and then everybody wanted to play it, and then I kept playing it, and now, now I've... I think it's good for laughs, but I do think it's one's like um, Resistance, where you can play twice and then put it away. Yeah, yeah well, that's yeah. that's probably what I should have done. Yeah, yeah and the, the problem with Resistance is like the first two games are great, and then you keep going, and then people just get more... They take everything more personal the more you keep going. Yeah. Um, I don't think Concept okay. has that, but there there is something about Concept where it's just like... Oh, I get so disappointed in how stupid you people are. Uh, <laughs> I not pick up on obvious things. Maybe, maybe it's that. Maybe it's just frustration of like how dumb the whole table is, including <laughs> like I'm not saying I'm smarter than anyone. I'm I I can't think of anything to like help my cause, but it doesn't feel like rewarding as as much as like other games do. Oh yeah. Hmm. There's not really like that. Like at least when you play werewolf and like you just like you discovered all the werewolves. Uh, like you feel victory, like you did it. And if you're the werewolves and you eat everyone, you feel victory that you did it. A concept, you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, I did it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I bet all you feel dumb. <laughs> so yeah, monikers and concept are my uh, my games. I think hopefully that'll go over well. Yeah, that, that's kind of my goal. Uh, I don't know if cool. you guys have anything on your plate. Maybe I can think of another one, but those are my two two pretty high up there. So uh, I think last year at Thanksgiving, I brought Sheriff of Nottingham, and I thought I did not think that my family would really respond that much to it, but I was like, this is kind of easy. I could probably teach it, but my family's not like huge gamers, but they are really competitive, and wow, I was super impressed because... Uh, have you guys played Sheriff of Nottingham, first of all? Yes. Yeah. Nope. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you it's it's like a bluffing game. You put put stuff in bags, and uh, you say, like, this is four chickens, but it might not be four chickens. And it, it's, it, it's uh, oh, man, not asynchronous, but asymmetrical. There you go. Yep. Uh, in that one person at a time is the sheriff. So they're looking people in the eye, and it's like, I don't believe that those are four chickens. It's like wine or something in there. And so the the sheriff can choose to open somebody's bag or not. If they were lying, then the sheriff gets money from them and takes away their their bonus stuff like wine because it's worth way more. But if they were telling the truth, the sheriff has to pay them. So you have to sort of weigh what you uh, what you're doing. Um, and everybody gets to be the sheriff twice. So it's a pretty quick game too. So because it's, it's only two rounds. Um, wow. I was going to say the thing Steve knows about me is um, I cannot lie. I hate bluffing games <laughs> and I never, ever, ever lie. And that's why I always win, especially like coup. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody's ever beat me at coup. Cause I just never lie. Dude. So, not lying is a, is a completely legitimate strategy in all bluffing games because everybody thinks that you're like some mastermind and you're just never no, lying. I will start. I will literally start the game by saying, I do not lie. I can yep. never lie. <laughs> and people will still like think that I'm lying. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, it is the point of the game to lie ostensibly, but that's and that's that's your advantage there. <laughs> uh, so, are you are you bringing back Sheriff of Nottingham this year? Or are you doing something? Absolutely. Else? Like I didn't even finish my story. Okay, so <laughs> all of my whole family are just uh, completely insidious when it comes to this game. That's what it revealed to me because they all just lied to each other's faces 
and did it just boldly. <laughs> they were like, this is definitely Portuguese. You can take that to the bank, buddy. There's just, and, you know, like selling it on, laying it on thick. And those people were lying all the time. They would just slide under all their bonus stuff and be like, ha, ha, ha. And the, the best one was my cousin. So I explained the rules and I was like, okay, you have to tell me, you have to tell the, the sheriff your truth or lie, but it has to be, you know, it has the number has to be right. And then you have to say what it was one time. And then after that, you can say whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So I, I like put that away and didn't think anything of it. But my, so my cousin told me this is three chickens. And then I was like, so what did you say? And he was, this was later. It was like five minutes later. And he was like, it's two chickens. Uh, or no, no, no. He said like, it's three bread. And I was like, wait a minute. You said it was three chickens. I'm definitely open in this. And it was three chickens. And I was like, wait, but you just said three bread. And he's like, well, you only, you said I only had to tell the truth the first time. And I was like, you, oh, <laughs> what? And so I had to, I had to pay him the money. It was, it was amazing. Uh, so I'm definitely going to bring that back. And um, I might, uh, so we sort of played one night ultimate a couple of times uh, on a beach trip earlier in the year. And that went over really well, but it was only like three of us there. And one of them, one of us was a like, you know, seven year old. And uh, it turns out they cheated a lot. <laughs> werewolf. But it was still extremely hilarious. Um, so I'll probably Go bring figure. werewolf back. The, the young ones are the cheating ones. Well, I think mm. it was more like he really didn't understand. And he was like, so excited to just see what everybody was doing. So he just had his eyes open the whole time. Oh, okay. And it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't like he was like he would cheat in outside of his own favor too. He'd be like, "Well, I'm definitely a werewolf." <laughs> and you're like, what? Don't say that. <laughs> or he would talk when it was his turn to open his eyes. But you know, that's just because he's young and he he doesn't doesn't know why he shouldn't. So it is still hilarious, and so that's going to be fun too. Right. Cool. Anything else? Um, I mean, concept and uh, code names, probably. Yeah, Trying code names get getting around. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, I was I wanted to tell the story. I was at the dentist this morning. Mm-hmm. I go every May, every November, every six months. <laughs> Got to get that dentist checkup. <laughs> yeah, um, and prior in May, my dentist was like, "Oh, are you doing anything fun for the summer?" Blah blah blah. I was like, "Oh, like oh, of course, like they got like the sharp needle scalpel thing in your mouth. I don't know what it's called. Uh, the pick. The pick." And I'm, like, yeah. tr- trying to explain, like, I go to Gen Con, it's, like, a board game thing, but not, like, Monopoly board games, like, games you've <laughs> never heard of, but don't take that as, like, sounding hipster. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally hipster, by the way. So, we talked about that a little bit, nothing, like, just the dentist small talk. Um, so, I'm sitting there this morning, just cleaning my teeth, and she's like, oh, how did your board game thing go? And I'm thinking, like, whoa, like, very, like, I see this lady twice a year. <laughs> she remembered that that's very cool and i was like oh it was really really good it was really good like i had a lot of fun saw a lot of people that i only see like once or twice a year and she's like oh cool cool she's like was there any like game that kind of like stood out to you and i was like like quickly thinking of like all the games i played and i was like well like clearly this older dentist lady like i'm not gonna throw out like pandemic legacy or something so uh, <laughs> Flick, flickster what was that western one flick them up flick them up flick them up uh, um, i loved it i love that game <sighs> i have that game i've not opened it yet uh so i was like oh i played this game called concept and she was like or not not concept oh look i'm already sl- code names code, code names. names i played this game called code names and it's really cool and she's like well can you sell me on it so she's like, oh, you break into two teams, and there are two team leaders that are looking over, like, a table of car, like, names or words, and there's a red team and a blue team, and they each have different words on the board that they have to do, and so, like, if there's, like, a cat and the dog, and those are your words, you might say animal, like, trying to do, like, a quick sell, and, like, she was, like, hanging on to every word, and, like, she was like, <laughs> so what, what's the game called? And I was like, code names. And she's like, oh, there's like a board game shop down the street, uh, which is one of the like biggest board game shops in the Milwaukee area. Um, mm-hmm. She's like, do you think they would have it? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And she's like, okay, just to make sure I have it right, it's code names. And I was like, yeah. And so like, <laughs> completely sold my dentist on code names this morning, um, <laughs> which is like my side off story. Yeah, but that was really cool. Uh, Six uh, months let's, not, let's not underestimate how great it is that Milwaukee has like a chain of board game stores. Yeah, the barrister. Um, 
They have Washington uh, D.C. certainly does not. <laughs> yeah, they have the board game barrister in Milwaukee. There's uh, one location on the east side, and then there's one kind of out in the suburbs. It's not technically Milwaukee, but it's close enough that you can say Milwaukee. So, and they pretty much have everything um, that you would see on like uh, Cool Stuff Inc. or uh, mi- mini- mini miniatures or whatever that site's called. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, that was a that was a cool like experience um, this morning. Well, you got to report back in six months. Yeah, I got to. Re- I'll report back in six months. Keep listening to the show. Uh, you'll find out if the dentist enjoyed code names or not. <laughs> Will you plan anything this holiday weekend? Uh, so I always travel with love letters because even if I'm just going to be seeing my mom, that's something that she and I can play together. But it's also my litmus test for how uh, intelligent the group of people I'm with um, like are. Because you know. Yeah, well, no, no. So I can test people because, you know, the fundamental rule of love letters is take a card, play a card, take a card, play a card, right? Mm. You don't have to think that much, right? Especially if it's a friendly game. So I can tell by having people play, like, who's the one who's going to be a little bit slow in playing our next game because they (laughs) don't quite get the concept of take a card, play a card. Um (laughs) Otherwise, uh, I'm probably going to try to meet up with some of our um, Georgia friends uh, who are Pokemon related, so I will not speak their names here. Um, (laughs) And uh, they do a lot of board gaming as well. So I'm probably bring Legacy Gears of Time with me and Kenzume Goddess, which is like my A number one favorite game of all time. So you're deck building. And it's easy to carry. Yeah, that's easy to take with me. So. No Mysterium? Uh, I might, might bring Mysterium, but that's like takes a lot of setup and everything, so mm-hmm. that's a lot to, to bring with me. But maybe. We'll see. Just doing something a little lighter. I'm trying to think of like other light games that go over well. Yeah, Kenzume Goddess is pretty easy to teach. And then like as you're playing it, you can figure out that there can be more complicated strategy to it. Sure, mm-hmm. yeah. So. I would suppose the theme might turn people off, though. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just cards. That's true. That's true. I might bring no thanks. That seems to go over pretty well. Oh man, I gotta buy no thanks. Yeah, it's like no. I gotta buy monikers. <laughs> monikers, no thanks. Yeah, uh, Will, you might want to look into no thanks. It's a bluffing game, though. Nope, so you- no thanks. That's like uh, what was it? Like eat your beats. Um, oh yeah no the beats uh, it is bad beats that's what bad it was. beats yes i actually played that game um after gen con uh, well a bunch of people were playing it at gen con i was like yeah that doesn't look for, like for me so i played it after gen con and i was like yeah this isn't for me <laughs> <laughs> it's it's for the people who made ascension and i mean like Ascension's good but yeah uh, that that theme is literally beats i, I mean can't... i i, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Not that I like beats at all, but I think the I theme love is. Beats. I think That's the theme is really the funny. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but it's still beats. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I can't do That's it. what makes it super funny. It's beats. <laughs> um, no, I don't think that game. Like, I would rather play Coup instead of Bad Beats. Well, Coup is another pretty simple game that you could bring for the holidays. This is what you could do. You could play Coup, except replace the little like money chits that you get with the beat icons from Bad Beats and just make <laughs> it a combination game. Coup Beats. Coup Beats. <laughs> Coup Beats. Um, any, any other games before we wrap up, guys? Hmm. You never, never seem to keep this show under 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's all right. We'll, we keep... We kept that the tradition up. Very, very Sean and Alan of you guys. <laughs> well, I'm the wacky professor. What can I say? <laughs> um, <laughs> before I forget, uh, we are giving away another copy of Two Rooms and a Boom uh, for the month of November. So in order to enter to win your copy of Two Rooms and a Boom, all you have to do is head over to iTunes and leave us a review in iTunes um, to enter. And then at uh, our first podcast of December, we will go ahead and we will pick a winner and get that copy out to you. And uh, 
could be like a Christmas gift. Maybe you already have it. And yeah, I'm actually considering um, bring, playing Two Rooms in a Boom at my uh, work holiday party. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, like, there's enough people actually to to do Two Rooms in a Boom. That's that's normally why I can't ha- have it and play a lot. Yeah. But uh, maybe I'll I could convince enough of my family to do that. Maybe that's the game I'll take. Yeah. Well, the the problem with the like the the holiday setting is like. Usually, like at least the family group I'm in, it's like nine people. I don't feel like that's enough for two rooms in a boom. Yeah, you forco- the sweet spot is twelve. Yeah. So, and then you also like need the space for it. Yeah. And if you mm-hmm. have like twelve well, people in you know, a house, at, you either have at my, at my two work small... holiday party, we have several conference rooms to work with. So see that works. That wouldn't yeah. be too hard. Either the house is too small, or maybe the house is really big. You don't have a problem. Too cold, though, to do it outside, at least in Wisconsin. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, leave us a review in iTunes. Um, thank you both, Will and Logan, for being on. You're very welcome. Yeah. No problem. We'll have you back. Hopefully. Awesome. I would love to. Well, I mean, <laughs> don't listen to Sean and Alan. We'll have you back. Uh, <laughs> uh, Will, where can our listeners find you if you want to be found? Uh, I mean, in the usual internet spot, wash in the sink, W-A-S-H-I-N-T-H-E-S-I-N-K. Awesome. Uh, on Twitter. That's where you find it, at Twitter. Just okay, don't the, like, the, type wash in the, the sink on the internet and figure, I think you're going to find me. Hold on, Will. The appropriate <laughs> the appropriate way to spell it was W-A-S-H-I-N-T-H-E-T-H-E, sink! S-I-N-T-H-E. Oh, dang! <laughs> <laughs> again. W a s h i n t h e sink. From start to finish, uh, Logan, <laughs> where can our listeners find you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm Logan Jenkins. Uh, yeah, it, if you uh, you know uh, have trouble sleeping or uh, want to learn more about the phenomenon ASMR, I uh, have one of those podcasts. It's the ASMR Newscast. If you want to listen to that. And sometimes I'm on SBJ's podcast too. The or well, the other SBJ podcast, Pokemon, the Pokemon so, one. Listen to that too. Forbidden word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> awesome, cool. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It is at dragging a lake. Uh, and if you have any feedback for the show, if you have any questions for us, whether it's uh, about Alan's teaching practices or about how rules are in two rooms in a boom or anything else. Anything or if you want to get Logan back on the show. <laughs> if, you, if you love Logan, uh, you can email us at podcast at TuesdayNightGames.com. I'm probably supposed to mention something about World Championship Russian Roulette. Yeah, I so love that game. That is me mentioning <laughs> it. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> oh, Kickstarter, start, Kickstarter starting soon for World Championship Russian Roulette. Yes, I do Either not have the, the date. Year uh, next year. I am not a part of Two Rooms in a Boom. I am just the podcast host. Of the you mean Tuesday Night, Night, Night Games. Games? That's right, yes. Uh, well, I, I <laughs> would say this. I, don't work for I, I never spend any money on Kickstarters that are not related to podcasts that I contribute to. Um, <laughs> I will give money to World Championship Russian Roulette because I played that game and I love that game and I want to see that game happen. That and also, it's cool. related to a podcast that you contribute to now. <laughs> and it's <laughs> wow, you pulled that one. You're so right. They tricked me. They, they changed the logic of the rules so that now I have to do it. Now you have to do it. Wow. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, listeners, for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Um, we will be back next week after uh, the holiday weekend to talk to you about more board games. Um, but this has been another episode of the Tuesday Night Podcast. And we are... Super effectively finished. <laughs> 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 Oh, man.